How's it going everybody and welcome back to another video. So, have you guys ever wanted to learn how to do your hard clue scrolls? Well, today you are in luck because I've had quite a few people asking me to do a full hard clue guide. So I thought, you know what, it's about time I actually got around to doing one. So today we are going to do a complete full guide on absolutely everything to do with hard clue scrolls. Everything from my gear setup to my inventory setup and I'm going to do as many of the hard clue steps as I possibly can or at least as many as I can get recorded uh, and show you guys live how I do each and every single one of them. I'm going to go through them step by step showing you where to stand, where to surge, where to bladed dive, all that good stuff. So hopefully this is going to help some of you guys out. So if this is the kind of content that you do enjoy, then do give the video a like. Dislike it if you dislike it, and if you are new, then please do subscribe. We also have a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link for that should be down in the description. And as usual, a very special thank you to my channel members, Init Yeah and Lady Evie. Thank you guys so much for the extra spot on the channel. And yeah, with all that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so real quick before we get into going over all of the stuff. This is not supposed to be a super efficient guide. I do clues fairly casually. I do about 30 hard clues per hour. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Depends on how focused I am. Um, so using this gear setup and all of my inventory setup and showing you guys exactly what I do, then you should expect around 30-ish hard clues per hour done. Um, so if that sounds like a good number to you, then hopefully this is gonna help you guys out. For those of you that are watching this that can do more than 30 hard clues per hour, do put down in the comments below um, what I can do to improve. Anything from my inventory setup to my gear setup, um, how you would change doing certain steps and things. Because the whole point of doing clue scrolls is to try and be as efficient as possible. Um, however, like I said, I don't usually go pretty sweaty. I, I just like to do it fairly casually. Um, I don't use puzzle skipping tickets either because they are super, super expensive. Um, so don't sort of put them into an uh, account because obviously you can do more clues if you use them. But yeah, I don't use them. So yeah, hopefully this is going to help some of you guys out. And like I said, if you can see anything to improve, do let me know. All right. So first things first, we need to make sure that we can do all of the hard clues steps. So. I'm going to put up on screen all of the skill requirements and all of the quest requirements. Um, so feel free to pause this to have a look at those. These will be just the base requirements. So this should allow you to do all of the uh, hard clue steps regardless of your gear. Um, as long as you've got these completed. Obviously having a few of the skills a bit higher. Things like combat for instance uh, will allow you to do some clues a little bit faster. And there's going to be also a few quests that aren't on this list that you can get items for that will help as well. But like I said, this is just for the base requirements to do all of the hard clue steps. So hopefully that will help you guys out. All right. So one of the biggest things that I would suggest before you start doing any clue scrolls is to make sure that you get the totem of treasure that is on Anachronia. This thing is super, super useful, especially in the long run. It will add up an absolute ton to make sure that you can do quite a lot more clue scrolls than usual. So when you charge this up, as you can see, it will say that this decreases the clue scrolls by one step. So this adds up an absolute ton. Yep, uh, every one of my clue scroll videos usually has a hundred clue scrolls. So essentially every one of those I've saved a hundred steps, um, which is quite a lot of clues over the long term. So I will put up on screen where you get each of the steps, uh, each of these these pieces to make this because it is super, super useful and I would not be doing clue scrolls without it. All right, so let's have a look at the gear that I personally use for doing my clues. So starting with the helmet, we have the Witch Doctor Mask. Now you get this by catching all of the Jadinkos, including all three god types um, over at uh, the Juju place. I can't remember what it's called, but the, the Jadinko hunting place Make sure you catch all of those within one week, including all three of the god types, and you will be rewarded with this. This basically gives you infinite teleports there, um, where there is a dig site. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty important, because that has now saved me a ton of time since I got that. Because the only other option pretty much is to use the uh, teleport bags, um, which with my inventory space, I never used to have sort of any space for. So yeah, definitely worth getting that one. 
Next up in our pocket slot, we have the Charos's Clue Carrier. Now this is from the Desperate Times uh, quest, I believe, and this is a super, super useful item. So basically, as you can see, it holds a ton of clues and a ton of caskets. Um, and the really nice thing about this is when you're wearing this and you complete a clue, it will auto replenish into your inventory the clue that you just completed. So if you complete a hard clue, it will automatically put another clue straight into your uh, into your inventory. So very, very good, super useful, saves a lot of time. Definitely go get that. Next up, we will have a look at the necklace slot, which we have the Grace of the Elves. Now, the teleport options that you do want is the Overgrown Idols, and I personally use the Zenaris Fairy Ring um, because it just saves me using up all of my portable fairy rings. Um, but the Overgrown Idols is 100% one that you do need. Um, I know a lot of people do use the second teleport one as the fishing hub, uh, but I personally don't find that super useful. I don't like having to to go from the hub to the uh, to the fishing guild. So yeah, um, these are the two that I personally use. Um, like I said, use whichever, but the Overgrown Idols is 100% needed. In our ammo slot, we do have the Tyrion Quiver 4. This basically allows us to have all of the teleports to um, to all of these places. Uh, basically, there's a couple that we will use. It's the Tyrus Camp and the Elf Camp. Um, this one, don't know how you pronounce it. You don't have to use this, but you can do. I personally use the, uh, the teleport crystal, but uh, yeah. Basically, it's those three teleports that you are going to need, so uh, make sure that you have the Tyrion Quiver 4. Next up for the weapons, I basically use a Drygon Mace. Forget what the perk is on it, I, I haven't perked that out at all, I've just chucked something on it at some point. Um, however, my Excalibur does have mobile on it, which is super, super useful. Um, so basically, as long as you're using dual wield um, and you have the mobile perk, you should be able to get around pretty quickly, and uh, yeah, it's... it's pretty much the mobile perk is pretty much a pretty much a requirement next up for the ring slot we have the look of the dwarves now basically the only thing i really use this for is the miscellanea uh, teleport Keld uh, keldegrim is pretty useful as well if you don't have um some of the uh, perks from from the globetrotter outfit um there is a step that is there and this is probably the quickest way to get there if you don't have uh, the perks from the Globetrotter outfit. All right, so moving on to the Globetrotter outfit. So the backpack, essentially what this does is it allows you to swap the clue. So if there is a step that you don't want to do or you can't do, then you can always swap by using this. These do have charges. Um, as you can see right now, I have three out of four um, and you do gain charges when you complete a certain amount of clue scrolls. So every four that you complete, you do get an extra charge. Um, basically, for the clue swaps, you're pretty much just going to swap very specific, um, very specific steps, anything in the wilderness, and a couple of other ones as well, which we will get into when we do the steps. Next up, we have the jacket, which basically allows us to teleport to whatever active um, clue step we have. So this would instantly teleport me to these coordinates and would allow me to just dig from there. Um, so this one is super useful if it's a, it's a teleport place that isn't super accessible um, or is much, much quicker to do. Again, very specific ones that I use this for um, because, again, you don't want to use all your charges up. Uh, so yeah, I will show you when to use that when we get to the steps. And next up we have the shards. So basically what this does is we can signal Yuri, which basically means that this acts as doing the emote for emote clues. Um, so whenever you've got an emote clue, you signal Yuri using this. You don't have to siphon through going all through all these um, different emotes to try and find it. You just use this and uh, pretty much just get him instantly. Next up we have the arm guards. Now these have a load of different teleports in. Um, these are all the teleport scrolls that you get from uh, doing clues. You put them inside of this and it's basically just all these teleports into one slot, um, which is super, super useful. Things like the Lumberyard, the Lighthouse, uh, Gutanoth, all of these good teleports. They're just sat in one slot. And finally, we have the boots. Now, 
I've never ever had to activate these. I do believe it just gives you extra stamina. However, having the full set, if you can see the set bonus, it says acts as the outfit for remote clues if the retrospective hidey hole is filled. Um, one less clue is required to earn an outfit ability charge and one outfit ability charge can be stored per outfit piece. Um, so basically, uh, these just allow us to get the charges for the useful stuff quicker. Besides that, I don't think I've ever really used them. All right, so for those of you that may not know where to get the Globetrotter outfit, you come to Zeta that is just outside of the Grand Exchange. You open up the shop and you end up buying these with treasure trail points. So you do have to do a ton of clues to, um, to, to buy these, uh, but they are definitely worth it. The, the order that I think I personally bought them in was the backpack to make sure that if I ever got any wilderness steps, you could uh, skip those pretty quickly. Then I got the jacket, then I got the shorts, then I got the gloves, then I got the boots. Um, that's the just the way I did it. It's entirely up to you, but uh, yeah, that is where you get those if you didn't already know. All right, so we'll quickly go through all of the inventory setup that I personally use to do my clues. Um, I'll kind of explain them as I do the clues on why I use them and stuff, but let's get into it. So obviously first slot, we have our active clue scroll. You can't do clue scrolls if you don't have a clue scroll. So obviously, you know, gotta be slot number one, right? Next up in the two next slots, we do have the passage of the abysses. We have two separate ones. Um, in the first one, we have the ring of dueling, the traveler's necklace, the skills necklace, the amulet of glory, the combat bracelet and the ring of slaying and in the second one we have the games necklace the enlightened amulet the dig site pendant and the ring of respawn in the next slot we have dave's spell book which you get from dave's big day out as a reward i believe um, this allows you to make chipped um telepot tabs and when you use them on it you put them inside the book so there's a few chipped teleports in here Next up, we have the Trollheim Farm Teleport. That's uh, that's super useful. Next up, we have the Grand Seed Pod. Now, this isn't super useful unless um, unless you don't have the full Globe Trotter outfit. So there is a pretty niche use for this, um, which I'll explain when we start doing the clue steps. Next, we have the Desert Amulet Four. Um, you do need the Desert Amulet Four, so you do need to do all of the elites. Um, to make it sort of more efficient because you do not have the um, second teleport if available to you if you don't. Um, otherwise you only have the first one um, all the way from one to three. So you do need to get the fourth. Next up we have the archaeology teleports. This again just a very niche thing. You, we basically just want to go to general bent nose with these but again I'll show you when we get there. Next up we have the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed. So the reason that you want Attuned is because obviously it doesn't run out of um, out of charges. So uh, you pretty much want to try and get this one. There's a couple of different um, teleports that you want to use throughout the clues. So super useful. Next up we have the Dungeoneering Cape. So unfortunately you do need to have 99 Dungeoneering um, to make it somewhat efficient um, because there is quite a lot of steps that uh, require teleports from this cape. Next we have the Ectophile. I don't really know why this is here but uh, I, th I think it's uh, I think it's from doing a different clue steps, um, different different tiers of clues. It's just there. Why not bring it along? Next up we have the Cape of Legends. Um, this is super easy to get. It's just a Legends quest and um, there's a dig site right next to it so definitely need that. Next up we have the Karamja Gloves 4. Again this is just used for a teleport to get there a lot quicker. Again, I will show you when we start doing them. Next, we have the Six Age Circuit, which is basically a bit of a backup teleport um, if you don't have the Globetrotter jacket. Um, again, as usual, I will show you when we do them. Next up, we have the Slayer Cape, which again, we use to teleport around. Um, there's certain ones that we need for clues. So yeah, definitely need another 99 there in Slayer. Next up we have the Portable Fairy Ring and the Spirit Tree Rerouter. Now these two items are just to teleport around. Um, invention, amazing. Definitely need these. Makes it so much easier. 
Next up we have the Pharaoh Scepter. Um, this is a much quicker teleport to a certain step. And like I've been saying this entire time, I will show you when we get to doing the actual clues. Next we have the Fremenic Sea Boots 4. I don't know which uh, which boots number it is that you get the Relic of Teleport to. Um, I've had these for a long, long time, so I'm not quite sure. But as long as you can teleport to Relica with them, um, that's absolutely fine. Next up we have the Wicked Hood. Now this is pretty much a teleport to the Nature Rune altar, so either use the Wicked Hood or if you've got the points from Runespan, um, get the Nature Rune teleports from there. Uh, either one would actually be fine. Next we have the Golden Statuettes. That is pretty much just to make sure that we can recharge the Ferris Scepter when that does run out of charge. Next up we have the Meerkat Scrolls, you know, we basically need our Meerkat to dig, so obviously bring those along. Uh, next we have the Power Burst of Acceleration. These are super super useful for doing clues, uh, it allows you to get around a lot quicker, um, so yeah, bring those along if you can. Uh, next two slots are just our inactive versions of the Fairy Ring and the tr uh, Tree Rerouter, um, so when these do get used up, essentially we have the backups. Next we have the Enchanted Lyre, which is a pretty much quick teleport to a certain step on uh, one of the, the islands, I cannot remember the name of it, but uh, yeah, I will show that when we get there. Next up we have the Worker District Teleports. Now this is for just one step. Um, ever since they made Hets Oasis, they changed where Hamid is, and uh, this is now where he lies. So um, essentially, make sure you've got some of those so you can go to his step. And last but not least, we have our Meerkat Pouch. Um, this allows us obviously to have a Meerkat with us, which uh, will allow us to dig a lot quicker and um, we don't have to be on the exact spot when we do so uh, yeah super super useful all right so we are going to do some clues and I will try to explain each of the steps as we go through them um, so you'll see this fancy looking box here um, this is a third-party application called alt one toolkit which uh, you may or may not have heard of um, Jagex has said that it is okay to use this um, so people that use this, it's absolutely fine. Um, however, as using any third party things, um, you know, use at your own risk. Um, but I will just show what I have my settings to. So really the only thing that I change um, is the slide and uh, I have the move interval at 0.3 seconds. Um, that's a fairly comfortable uh, pace for me. I can go lower, but um, yeah, I, I can sort of mess up sometimes if that is uh, a little bit lower. So yeah, 0.3 seconds is about what feels comfortable for me. Um, and when it comes to maps, um, I do kind of have this as sort of the older school style. Um, so instead of having it all sort of super detailed and stuff, uh, I actually prefer it to refer it like this. So. Um, I will just show you the good thing with this is so whenever you open up your clue it'll automatically take you to wherever that step is um, so as you can see it's showing me exactly where that step is and for this one in particular I normally use the Globetrotter um, jacket for the teleport straight there um, depending on how many charges I have available if I have um, less than two, like if I have two or less, should I say, um, I will just use the sixth age circuit to run there. And uh, yeah, that is uh, a little bit more of a, of a run. Obviously it'll take you, it'll take you to the world gate there. And you would run through there and get to there. So obviously I should have my meerkat ready. Um, and then we just dig here. And what do we have next? So. This is up at the top of Premnik. As you can see, Fairy Ring, DKS. That is why we have these purple Fairy Rings. This one I've not found a particularly good way of um, getting to. Usually just sort of Lady Dive from this, this section and uh, hope that I don't aggro anything and then instantly dig when we get there. This one, this is showing the Dave's Spellbook. Um, and this is the uh, down teleport, so 
we want to be doing that. And we want our camera to be facing uh, to the west. So that we can click straight away as we come round the, that corner. So as we come round the, uh, the water pump, we can do a surge. As we come round here, we will surge again. And then we will bladed dive to this spot here. That can be done fairly quickly. All right, next one. We will just be using the Slayer Cape, which is on number three. Make sure that the camera is facing south and it is just digging this tree. So you can bladed dive across to there. That's pretty, pretty easy. So this is the one that I was saying use the Wicked, uh, wicked Hood teleports. Um, this is just the, the nature rune um, place. So if you have nature rune teleport tabs, you can also use those. Best way I find to do this is once you teleport in, lady dive over this way, do a surge, and then I usually sort of click onto this mud pile here. It's around this area, I'm not really sure exactly which the spot is, um, but yeah, that always seems to work. To this one, we go to the, um, the, uh, what the hell are they called? Bandit camp, that's the one. So for this one in particular, um, we use the ones from the, the arm guards because it is closer. Um, the teleport from the enlightened amulet will put us about here, um, which is a little bit further away. So normally I would have my camera facing not south, it's like southwest. I would bladed dive over to this one, click over this way, surge, and come round and usually just sort of run there. I've done it a different way before where I've somehow managed to surge and bladed dive in line with this and just managed to surge straight down, which has saved a good bit of time, but that is uh, that is generally how I do that one. All right, so for the banana plantation on Karamja, we want our camera to be facing south and we want to use this, use the Amulet of Glory and number two, get bladed dive ready and I usually aim it sort of over here into here. Use my shorts that I have on R to summon the double agent. As you can see, I don't kill these particularly fast. Um, I see people like one tap these. Um, so if anyone knows how to kill them faster without having to switch a ton, <laughs> then uh, let me know because I'm, uh, I'm not good at the combat. All right, so the next one we have is at Eagle's Peak. So I've only just realized recently, as somebody sent me some stuff, that you can get the Lodestone teleport on here. So the uh, the quickest way to do it is obviously to just click one of those. Um, you can put them on your health bars. But uh, yeah, I need to work out where they are on here because this is brand new to me. I've only just recently done it. But yeah, sorry, you would normally get into your lodestone. You're already facing south, um, so have your camera facing south. Um, surge down, and you could bladed dive to here um, to save maybe an extra few milliseconds, but it's not too bad. Next up, we have the one at the uh, dig site. So we want to use the dig site pendant and do number three um, to the exam center. Once you're here, you just want to be talking to one of the examiners and they will end up giving you a slide puzzle. So this is where Alt 1 comes in super, super useful. So as you can see, it says solved. It knows how many moves there's going to be. And when you press guide, it will start showing you. So as you can see, there are these white little boxes that are going to show us exactly uh, where we want to be going. And I've already messed up, so I will just quickly reset this. Um, it hasn't really looked at a good way of doing it, but anyway, um, as you will notice, when it gets to a corner or where it's going to turn, it does kind of slightly slow down. Um, so that is how I know which, uh, which block to click on. 
as when it does just go in a straight line, it does progressively get faster. Like I said, once they uh, they turn, they do slow down for that particular square. And easy as that. Alright, so next up we have Hetz Oasis. So, obviously you want to be going to the Jewel Arena. And, or oh, what used to be the Jewel Arena, should I say. Camera facing sort of northeast. Later dive this way, if it wants to work. No, I think you might need to click first. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. Uh, now for this bit, something I really wish they would change is just remove this block so that once we come over here, we could surge and end up straight down here because there's another one there that uh, makes it a little bit awkward. But once you stand in the middle of here, just dig. Alright, so this is the tent in the bandit camp, so again, we want to be using the arm guard teleport, which is on number two. And we want to be going over into this crate, getting that. Next up, we have this, uh, this place, I don't even know exactly what it's called, but as you can see, fairing DJP, that's down on my bottom one down there. Get your bladed dive ready. Obviously you want to be facing north. Normally I have my camera a bit more out. Bladed dive to the front door. Open the door, obviously. Up the stairs. Start to turn your camera around to the south so that you can click on these drawers. And as you come around the corner, surge and click again. All right, next up we have the place at the mountain camp. So. We want to use our slaying ring, so use the ring of slaying, use number three to go to the Fromnik uh, place. Camera angle, uh, I had it the wrong way, uh, northwest. So normally I click here because there's a little bit of an invisible bit there. Bladed dive, surge, uh, sometimes I double surge, but uh, I, I run a little bit too much there. So normally I would click over there. Um, bladed dive, surge, surge, click on this wall, and then as you start running around here, once you get around this corner, surge, bladed dive, surge, and call for Yuri. This fence will always block, um, will always block you, so you can uh, you can do the double surge with the bladed dive in between, and uh, you won't go any further. It's, it's pretty nice because if you stand one square this way, um, you cannot summon them. So that fence is an absolute lifesaver. All right, next up for the fishing guild. The way I personally do this, I know people do use the uh, um, Grace of the Elves teleport for the deep sea fishing hub. I don't really like that one. So what I do is I use my skills necklace, go to the fishing guild. I usually have my camera facing north for this. Open the gate, slightly turn the camera, click that way, surge, click up there, surge, start running here, and let it dive through. And then obviously summon Yuri. I always find that one not too bad. Um, I don't know if the deep sea hub is quicker, it probably is, but that is just personally how I do that one. Alright, so for the panic in the woods, we want to be placing our camera sort of southeast. Use the portable fairy ring. Normally I would sort the, sort the camera out during a teleport animation, but just for just so you guys know. So I have it sort of southeast. ALQ. Get bladed dive ready. In between these trees, click over this way, click, and that. As you can see, that guy seems to kill theirs much quicker than me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Always common courtesy to say good luck when you do your clues. 
As you can see, we've got this one again, so I will just skip until we've done one that we haven't done yet. Actually, I will probably show that because that is normally how I would do that. Uh, like I said, do the click, bladed dive, double surge, and then again here, surge, bladed dive, surge, call for Yuri. Alright, so for the pyramid one, we want to be having our camera facing south. Uh, use the Ferro Scepter. Number one, go into Pyramid Plunder. We want to be facing south because the exit to the tomb is that way. Get Bladed Dive ready. Click over this way. Click and surge. Might need to go a little bit more forward sometimes. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit too far away. And then obviously just uh, call for Yuri again. That is generally how I would do that one. Alright, so for this one, this is, as you can see, uh, the Watchtower tab is chipped. So open up the spellbook. Uh, we want to be facing north for this, uh, or at least this is how I would normally do it. Um, go to the Watchtower. Get ready to click over this way. Click into there. Surge. Wait to come around the corner. Surge again. Click on the crate. So essentially, make sure your character starts running towards this crane. Surge down there. As you come around the corner, surge towards the crane and click on it. Uh, again, we have the Eagle's Peak Lowstar. So, like I said before, face south, surge, click, play dive, dig. Nice and easy. Alright, so... This is one of the most annoying ones <laughs> since the change with Pets Oasis. Um, so this is Hamid. Uh, this is why we have the Worker District Teleport. So we want to be using one of those. Uh, I haven't really found a good way to do this, but maybe somebody can show me. But generally, I would try to come this side of the, of the fire pit and kind of just surge and blade dive around to, to get us to have it as quickly as possible. And again, we will have another um, the slide puzzle. So just follow it as it, uh, as it slows down on the corners. I cannot seem to get the feel for my mouse tonight, so. But as you can see, we just wait to look for the ones that it just slightly slows down. And this just makes puzzle sliding skip puzzle sliding skips puzzle sliding things much much easier um, and this is why I don't want to spend three mil per, per puzzle skip because they take about 20 seconds each which granted do add up over the long term but uh, yeah I definitely don't have that kind of way to be splashing around all right so the next one we've got is for Gutanos so we want to be going to Gutanos with the arm guards, which is on number four. Uh, we want to be facing, my bad, we want to be facing, oh no, I was right, uh, west, getting it to the gate. Uh, helps if I actually click on it. So first of all, I usually surge down this way. I don't bother surging at any of this point because you do a bit, but once you're on the bridge, lady dive to this rock, quickly click over it, start spamming on that square while surge and surge, and then you will end up running across, and then lady dive, and dip. So that one's a little bit more complicated. Um, basically, as you come out through the gate, surge along, Get to the bridge, bladed dive, once you're on the bridge, you need to be on the bridge to do it, um, to that wall. Bladed dive, bladed dive, uh, no, bladed dive, surge, surge, jump, bladed dive. Alright, so this next one is actually down in this, uh, this bit that's just above, uh, Yanil, I think that is. And uh, it takes a little while to get to, so this is one of the ones that you would want to use your uh, jacket teleport because 
it saves you an absolute ton of time. It'll take you right into this room, and it's just this box that you are right next to. Alright, so there are two different steps that are pretty much in the exact same spot on White Wolf Mountain. So both ways, same way of getting to both of them, should I say, is uh, go to the Overgrown Idols. Make sure your camera is facing to the east. I would then uh, click, surge, bladed dive, if I click right, and then instantly click on you. Go to number two. And then when it is for the costume one, I would just signal for Yuri. However, this one is to talk to this little guy and get another puzzle skip. And as we complete that, we literally get the uh, <laughs> the one way we would have to do in a moat. So exactly the same way of getting here. Um, however, this time, obviously, you want to just use your, your Yuri signal from the, uh, from the shards. I will probably show how to do that one again. Um, because sometimes it can be... Uh, I don't know if I showed it up very well. So, with this one, obviously we want to use the teleport from our uh, desert necklace, number one. So you can guess that is in Nada. I usually have my camera angled slightly to the northwest. And then I would bladed dive into here. And uh, if I could find where the guy was stood, there they are. That is just another puzzle skip from there. Alright, so next up is going to Willow that is in the Barok Square. So just teleport straight to Barok. And Willow should be just here. So you could blade a dive or something to them, um, but they will give you another puzzle box. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty easy one as well. Alright, so this one we need to go to the edge for Lodestone. So let's find that on your teleports. And it is the little place straight north of you in this little room. And he is there. Again, it will give you another puzzle box. There is probably ways to get to him slightly faster by using specific bladed dives and stuff, but when they're that close to the, uh, the lodestone, I generally just kind of walk it. I'm not... Uh, not super sweaty with it, like I said. But I am sure there's probably a way to do it. It uh, will save you a few few milliseconds here or there. Alright, so this is in the Abbey that is right here. It's literally right here, but I will show you how I would normally do this. So, we want to be using our combat bracelet, which is on number 5 on mine. And then number 3 to the monastery. Usually I have my camera faced um, to the east as... The abbot is usually around here. Again, uh, so he's, you know, you just talk to him and he will give it. Again, like I said, you, there's probably a way to do this slightly faster. You know, bladed dive into here, surge or, or whatever, but generally they're not too bad. Alright, so for this one we want to be digging near the witch's house's window uh, in Draenor. So, we want to be using our Amulet of Glory. And number three, make sure you're facing north, get your bladed dive ready. And when you teleport in, there is this little tele uh, little window here. Just make a dive to it there, and dig. Now we'll get you that one. Next up is the dig spot on the top of Trollheim. So obviously you just use the Trollheim teleport. And it is on this little square here with the, the rubble. And just dig there. Alright, so our next one is just above the Tyrus uh, camp. So we want to use our uh, Tyrion Quiver 4 and use number 3, which would be over here. Um, if you're wanting to click, it's this uh, this green little triangle. Uh, however, using number 3 is a little bit quicker. Um, I forgot to change my camera around, but we were supposed to be facing north. <laughs> uh, I usually will Surge towards there, climb through these, uh, hopefully I don't climb back, yep there we go. Unfortunately I don't think there's a way to do any surges or bladed dives here, I mean maybe you can attempt one here, maybe here, that might save you a bit of time, 
doing it something like that. Uh, but yeah, you just come into this sort of where the L shape of that water is and, uh, and dig there. Alright, so this is a wilderness step. We do not do wilderness steps. That is exactly what this backpack is for. We will swap that clue and say, yes, we want to swap that. And we will get something that we do want. So this one is uh, an, an anagram. Obviously, you can see it is in our down. So use the our down teleport. Face south, because the building is to the south. It is this door here. So bladed dive over to the door if it wants to work didn't really want to do it today and you talk to this person and they will give you another puzzle box all right so again we have this one which again like I said I would normally use the Globetrotter jacket but this time around I will show you how to do it using the sick blade circuit so we want to go to the world gate which is on number two have our camera facing sort of east start clicking over this way uh, we can surge around this tree, surge, bladed dive, go through here, and this is where the surges and stuff can get a little bit funky, <clears throat> as the pathing isn't super great here, but it kind of fits where it is, and then that is how you would do that one. Like I said, it's just quicker if you can use the jacket teleport, obviously, um, which is why we use it when there are enough charges available. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to be using sort of our last ones on this though, because this is fairly easy compared to some other ones. All right. So for this one, again, this is the fishing guild just here. We are going to be digging a spot right next to it. So we want to use the skills necklace. Go to the fishing guild and uh, face slightly to the north. Not be sort of click sort of between these trees. Uh, usually once I get through these trees, I click a bladed dive over here and it is just between these two trees here. So for this one, because it is beneath the anil, it's a little bit of an awkward one to do. You can either use the um, Yanil lodestone, that was a way that I used to do it. Um, however, the way I do it now is using uh, the Gutanoth, putting my camera sort of to the east click over this way, surge down, <laughs> if I did it right, let's, uh, let's, let's attempt that again. So normally we would click down here, surge down this, down here, surge again, use bladed dive, and try to sort of surge around these trees if you can and stuff. And then it is just on this little hill somewhere around here. There we go. Alright, so for this step, the quickest way, obviously, is to use the Skeletal Horror Teleport. However, if you do not have that unlocked, um, because you do need to do quite a few things to get that, you can always use the Lumberyard Teleport, which is number six, number six on the, uh, the arm guards. So... Before I had this un uh, that unlocked, not only what I would do is teleport here and then just keep surging and blade diving along here to run all the way to him. However, definitely recommend getting that skeletal horror teleport unlocked because it literally brings us straight to him. And again, it just gives us another puzzle box. Alright, so again we've got this one in the little boxes over here. I don't remember if I did it right the first time, so I'll try to show you guys again. So make sure you facing north, click here, surge, click again, obviously do it quicker, and uh, surge, and click the crack. Alright, and for this one, this is why we unlocked the Witch Doctor Mask, because a lot of the time, for this one, I used to have to use the Juju Teleport Bags, which normally I don't have in my, uh, my inventory, so I would have to go to the bank, get one out of the bank, then use it. So this is why we have the Witch Doctor Mask. So if we teleport this, make sure your camera is facing south. And I have not found a good way to try and surge and stuff around this because of that weird little kind of diagonal that is within that. Um, but because of all this being in the way, it's kind of awkward. But yeah, basically you kind of want to come behind this tree, 
and just dig down here. All right, so for the lumber yard, we want our camera to be facing to the east. We want to use our armband things uh, to the lumber yard teleport, which is on number six. So the way I do this, I've seen people do all sorts of different ways. I've seen people come down here and do stuff like that. I don't know how they do it, but the way I do this, so I click on that. Once I'm in line with this stump, I will bladed dive over to it, click on it. Normally I move my camera around a lot faster than this. Um, as you come past this tree, surge down and then click back on the box. Um, that is the quickest way I've found to do it, or at least it's the way that works best for me. Um, I have seen people do other different ways of doing it, so yeah, kind of work out how, how that one works for you. Alright, so for this one we need to go to the Legends Guild. So. We teleport to the Legends Guild using that. We want our camera to be facing south. Um, usually the place that I like to play the dive to is just diagonal of this uh, this bench here. However, if we try to do it from the teleport, it does say that you uh, cannot, uh, cannot do it because you can't walk through it. So basically click it, click to walk there, and then instantly bladed dive. So you'll do this, and then we want to dig. All right, so for this one in the just north of the bandit camp, this is where you want to be using your enlightened amulet. So we want to use the anomic, the enlightened amulet. Use number three to go to the entrance. As you'll see, this brings you a lot more north. Um, the the one using the arm band thing will uh, teleport you around here. So this does bring you a bit more north. Obviously, we want to be facing north. We want to surge. I bladed dive usually over here, and then surge again, and so I'll just run around. And that is usually roughly how I do that. Sometimes it changes depending on where the, uh, uh, oh god, why am I lagging all of a sudden? Yeah, sometimes it changes from, uh, sort of depending on where it puts me in line with. Sometimes if I can be bothered to try and get it in line, I think if I bladed dive to those cactuses, you can basically search straight up in a line here and you'll get there just a little tiny bit faster. But you guys will probably notice throughout some of these that I will just micromanage the uh, the camera angle slightly every now and then. Um, it's mainly because you kind of need to constantly micromanage it, but roughly the direction that you, uh, you do stuff. Because as you can see, I like to spin my camera around so that the crate is easily to be clipped and stuff. Um, so yes, just kind of get used to micromanaging your camera a little bit. Alright, so as you can see, we have another wilderness step. We do not want that. <laughs> so that is another one to be swapped. Alright, so we do have this pyramid plunder one um, now. However, I haven't turned my camera around because as you've noticed, that was the last charge of this. This is where the golden statuettes come in useful. You want to just talk to the guardian mummy and press 2 with your golden uh, golden statuettes and that will give you another 6 charges. Alright, so this next one is using the second teleport in the uh, the desert amulet. Um, if you don't have the desert amulet for to do this, um, as you'll see it's just in this crate here so it's super super close if you have that teleport. However, if you don't have it, you basically either need to use the fairy ring uh, there or you need to use the um, first teleport and just run super, super north. Uh, but yeah, basically, this is exactly why you need the desert amulet for instead of um, uh, instead of just the, any of the other ones. All right, so this is another anagram. So this one is over on Karamja. Um, as you can see, it's right next to a spirit tree, so make sure that you uh, can go to the Brimhaven spirit tree, which is on number 8. Have your camera facing well, this way, so that you can click straight on them. And uh, there isn't really a <laughs> very good way to do any sort of blade dives or anything. However, you can see that this is going to give us a um, challenge scroll, uh, and the answer is straight on there, ready for us to put in. So, as you can see, number 33, put that in, and that is completed. 
Next up we need to be in the bank in Shiloh, so the quickest way there is to use the Slayer Escape and go to uh, number 7, depending on who it is, uh, depending on what quests and stuff you've done. So the way I've found to do this is to go down the ladder. And this kind of cross section where the vines are, click on that, make sure you go on there. Get bladed dive ready, go towards the plant, surge, that way you can come into here and call for Yuri. Obviously, if you do all that without explaining it and stuff, um, that is actually pretty quick. Alright, so next up we need to be in the lighthouse, so we need to use the lighthouse teleport because I think the nearest one besides that is the, yeah, maybe like the chips. I don't even know what that is. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing, nothing close here at all, so make sure you're using the lighthouse teleport. And uh, depending where this puts us, this might not work, but sometimes you can bladed dive to the door. Yeah, it's not going to let us. There's Sometimes you'll get um, teleported to a place where you can actually uh, bladed dive to the door. Make sure you go to the top and signal for Yuri. Alright, so for this step we want to be going to the uh, gnome agility place. So the quickest way there to use the spirit tree rerouter and go to the tree, uh, tree gnome stronghold which is on number two uh, we want to be facing sort of south ish because we want to be talking to a trainer sometimes they're wandering just around the entrance uh, but these do give you a, another puzzle box all right so this dig spot is in yanel so the quickest way to do that is to go to the watchtower teleport uh, as you can see, it takes us pretty close to the center, so that's nice. Uh, sorry, I should have already had my camera facing to the east. We want to come just around the corner to this fence. Surge as soon as we get there. We want to go one square in front of this post here. We want to blade a dive to this spot. I believe that's the correct spot there. And then surge again, and it will take you right into this corner here, which, if we dig, we should be able to get the uh, the casket from there. All right, so for this one, we want to be going to General Bentnose, which is the quickest way, is using one of the uh, archaeology teleports. Go to Collectors and go to General Bentnose. And this will teleport you basically straight outside their hut. Talk to him and he will give you another puzzle box. Okay, so this step is at the Ardown uh, Zoo. Um, as you can see, there is a teleport that is the quickest one there, which is the Clock Tower teleport from the armbands. So use that. Get Bladed Dive ready. We want to be facing north. I forgot to change my camera around. Um, we want to be facing north. Bladed Dive over this way. Sometimes it does something annoying like that. So what you can do is you can just click and then Bladed Dive. Most of the time, it ends up teleport teleporting you somewhere roughly roughly in the middle so um yeah just hopefully hopefully it does that otherwise just make sure you click before you uh blade a dive you come next to this uh this little fire torch thing and just dig and you will end up getting that one all right so this is the step that i would say to use a grand seed pod if you actually wanted to do it however this is one of the few steps that isn't a wilderness step um, that I would use a backpack to swap the clue because it takes quite a while to walk to the guy and then you end up getting a puzzle off him. So it's actually a fairly long step if you do do it. Um, so most of the time, this is just a pure swap. Uh, like I said, if you do want to do it or you don't have the backpack to swap yet, Grand Seed Pod is the best way to do this because um, it will take you straight to the tree. And uh, yeah, then you can do it from there. All right, so this is one of two um, steps that are in the wizard's tower. So uh, the way to do this is to turn your camera to the south. Um, we want to be using the traveler's necklace, which I have in number two, and using the wizard's tower teleport, which should teleport us just outside the entrance. Um, but with us facing south, we will be basically right near the entrance. Uh, and we can blade a dive and surge straight in. So 
for this step, we want to be looking for this little uh, professor guy. However, the other step is to click on the southern um, bookcase on this side. So if we do get that one, I will show you as well. But that is just so you guys know where to go for, for both of these, um, as they're both just on the, on the first floor. All right, so for this step, we want to be going to the fairy ring CKR, which we have there. We want to be facing our camera south. Now, this one is a little awkward because of all these trees and stuff. So I noticed that you can't really surge and stuff until you get out of the trees. However, if you bladed dive once you get out of this, um, however, I did misclick there. So I'll just try to reenact it a little bit better. So you want to bladed dive as you come out. There you go. Click straight onto the rock. Spam over here as you come around this corner, surge across. Um, and bladed dive, however I did, again, misclick where my bladed dive was and just dig, dig in this area. All right, so for this step, we want to be digging next to the uh, the fire pit that is uh, near that uh, place at the overgrown idols. So teleport to the overgrown idols. Obviously, again, camera to the east, click this way, surge, and bladed dive right in front of this, um, right in front of this fire and then just dig and that is that step done okay so this next step is at trader stand which is at Portsa rim so we want to go to the Portsa rim lodestone have our camera facing sort of southeast start clicking over in this direction and when we get in front of this thing we will bladed dive across and come and talk to this guy and he will give us another puzzle box. Okay, so this step is one of the ones that you 100% of the time want to use a jacket teleport, regardless of how many charges you have. If you have a charge, use it, because this step otherwise is super, super difficult to get to. It takes a really long time. Um, the other way that you would do this is basically you would teleport to um, this ALP fairy ring, and then this tiny little hole here, you would climb inside there which would then bring you uh, out somewhere at these uh, this place here so it is a super long run it takes a long time and it's just kind of awkward so basically this is a hundred percent use a jacket teleport once you get there you will just dig as you can see you uh, you want to be digging sort of where these kind of two, uh, two load of spears are, and then, uh, yeah, carry on. Okay, so this step is just to talk to Hans, so the quickest way to do this is using your Slayer Cape, going to number two, you could use the Traveler's, uh, no, sorry, the Ring of Respawn as well, um, and that would put you straight here, and then all we need to do is talk to Hans, and he will just give us a new clue step. All right, so this next step is another one that we want to be using the backpack to use a skip. However, if you, again, if you don't have the backpack, you can always use the um, Keldergrim uh, teleport from the Look of the Dwarves and run, run across the bridge and talk to this guy. Or you can go from the Grand Exchange and use the, um, use the underground tracks or whatever they're called from there and come to this building here. Um, the reason we skip this is because it takes a long time to get to, and then when you do get there, it is um, just a uh, puzzle skip, like puzzle box. So this step can take quite a long time if you don't skip it. All right, so for this step, we want to be going to the jungle, uh, the Karazi jungle. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but uh, it is CJS on the um, fairy ring want our camera to be facing to the west. We want to start clicking over this way. We want to surge, bladed dive over this way and surge. And it is just to dig in front of this little, uh, little pool here. Nice and easy. All right, so for this one, the quickest way is to use a miscellaneous teleport on the uh, Ring of Wealth or the Luck of the Dwarves and come and talk to Queen Sigrid and she will give you another puzzle box.
All right, so that was actually a much better version of the Shiloh Village one. Um, as you can see, I did end up surging to the, to the ladder uh, to begin with, and then came down and did that a little bit quicker. So as you can see, that is uh, a fairly quick one if you do it like that. All right, so for this step, we want to be using our attuned crystal teleport seed and going to the Iworth um, one. If you don't have a crystal seed, I suppose you could use the uh, the skill uh, the slave skill cape to go to not Marvan um, and run into here. And we want to go talk to Lord Iworth, and he will give us a another puzzle box. Okay, so this is another step that we want to use the desert amulet for. We are going to go to Nada, uh, and we want our um, camera to be facing the west again. And then we want to search down here, and bladed dive, and right in front of this cactus, you just have a dig, and you get your clue scroll. Alright, so for this step, we want to be going to the Archer's Guild. Now... For anyone that has watched any of my streams, I always complain about this place because it is the only place that isn't sort of parallel to everywhere else. Um, I don't know why that annoys me so much, but it does. So what we want to do is we want to go use the combat bracelet. We want to go to the ranging guild and we want our camera angle to be kind of southeast um, so that we can go straight in through the front door because it's on a bit of an angle. Start clicking this hay bale um, and then surge towards it and then you will end up getting your clue from that. Alright so this step is at the Barbarian Assault place um, so we want to be using our games necklace and going to Barbarian Outpost. We want our camera to be facing north and we want to dig on that shell that is up at that top corner there. So what we do is we click on there, wait to come around this tree, surge, and play dive if I did that correctly, um, to basically land on to that shell. When you dig there, you will get your next clue. So this next step is in the wheat field in Tavali. So the way we want to do this is use the tel Tavali um, teleport. Um, we wanted our camera angle to be sort of southwest so that we could bladed dive down this way and surge, uh, we don't go too far and just dig near the scarecrow. Next up we have another anagram which is Cam the Camel. Um, so we want to be going at two Hetz Oasis. We want our camera angle to be facing a sort of west way. Come around the corner, this tent is annoying now that it's there. Uh, and Cam should be around here somewhere. There they are. And they will end up giving us another puzzle box. Alright, so for this step, we want to be going north of the Overgrown Idols. So, obviously, teleport to the Overgrown Idols. We want to start clicking north. Obviously, camera facing north. Um, I've already messed up, but it's fine. So, once we're around there, we can play the dive and uh, search. Normally I would surge that first little bit, but it's fine. Once we come through this gate, click so that you're angled to uh, to one side. You can surge and bladed dive just in front of here. And then you can dig and get your clue scroll from there. All right, and for this step, we want to be using another fairy ring. As you can see, it says BKR. So we'll be going to that. We want our camera to be facing to the west. And the dig spot is between those two logs up there. So what we normally do is start clicking up there. Once we come around this corner, I'll surge, but at the same time be clicking. And then I will bladed dive into those two logs, dig and get our clue. All right. So this is the other one that I was saying is in the wizard's tower. So we want to use our traveler's necklace and go to the wizard's tower, camera facing south. Start clicking into here. Surge, play to dive, and click on this southern bookcase. And you will get your clue. Alright, so let's try this one again. Hopefully we can actually get the blade to dive in this time. So we'll click up there, surge, play to dive, and dig. And that is much smoother and much quicker. 
All right, so this step is under the basement in the kitchen in Lumbridge Castle. So the quickest way I do this is by using the Slayer Cape. Use number two again so that we can teleport right outside there. We could use, again, the Ring of Respawn. I usually bladed dive towards inside here if uh, it depends on sort of where you spawn in. But then you can start surging around and get in down this trapdoor. Turning the camera as we go around. As we come into here, play the dive across and use this crate here to get our clue. Alright, so for this step, this one we want to use the Tyrion Quiver for again. However, this time we are going to go to number six, which is the elf camp. So if you're going to click, it's this little green uh, sort of diamondy thing up here. We want our camera to be facing south. Head to the log, uh, the log balance here. There's probably a certain way to get to this log quickly using stuff here. Um, however, I don't do that. So I usually just start clicking up here. Uh, I used the wrong thing. I meant to play the dive instead of surging. Come into here, and again, it's just sort of in this L shape here. Just dig, and you will get yourself another clue. Alright, so this might be the teleport spot that you can use a bladed dive. So if you do ever teleport to this bit, you can just bladed dive to the front of this door. And uh, as usual, just go to the top and summon Yuri. Like I said, that one doesn't always let you bladed dive. It just depends on where it teleports you. Um, but if it teleports you sort of to the... Um, to the, the southeast, then usually you can can get a bladed dive in. All right, so this is another wilderness step. Um, as you can see, it's the one that's near the lodestone in the in the wilderness. So as usual with all wilderness steps, we want to be swapping that glue. All right, so this next step is just north of Berg de Rot. So we want to be using our games necklace and using the Berg de Rot teleport However, if you don't have that, because that does take some time to get, um, you can always use uh, Draken's Medallion and uh, teleport to uh, to there. Um, it is just the southern side of it, so it does take a little lo longer to walk. Um, so it's obviously better to get the uh, the game's necklace version, um, but it does it does take a little while to unlock. So once you come over this uh, over this gate, I usually bladed dive up to here. Start running up and double surging, and then it goes onto this little piece of dirt here. Just dig there, and you will get your clue. Okay, so for this step, the quickest way I've found to do it is actually, I know that the Draenor Lodestone is just there, however, normally I will go to the, um, to the Lumbridge Normal Teleport, and I will show you how I would do this. So we want our camera to be facing sort of um, northwest. Start clicking over this way. So, uh, bladed dive, surge, surge, start running. And usually bladed dive sort of gets ready for kind of about there. Go up to the top and get these, uh, get the clue from these crates. I find that slightly quicker than going from the lodestone. The lodestone doesn't seem to have very good surge and bladed dive opportunities. Maybe I'm wrong. So if somebody knows if there is a little bit better way than that, then uh, then do say, because I have been doing that way for a little while now. All right, so we've got another anagram. So this is going to be the gnome coach. So we want to go to Eagle's Peak, which is this one here. Uh, we want our camera, if I can quickly turn it, uh, it's too late, uh, to sort of south um, southeast. We want a bladed dive down here, cross over this style, and hopefully we'll catch him. Oh, he's coming around over there, so I'll head this way. I want to kind of surge and get around this way, talk to him, and as you can see, the answer is right there. We want to input six. And we get our clue, our casket. All right, so here is another clue that is a 100% a skip. Um, 
The reason that this is a skip is because this is on uh, Entrena, or however the hell it's pronounced, which means you're not allowed to wear anything, you're not allowed to bring gear, you're not allowed to bring weapons or anything like that. So, uh, so this step is just a complete miss. We do not want to be doing it. Um, because even if we were to try and use the jacket teleport um, with having weapons and stuff, it just puts you at Port Sarim. Um, so it's it's a really, really terrible step that we always want to use a, um, a swap clue uh, backpack charge for. So make sure you do that. All right, so for this step, we want to be basically right in the middle of uh, the, uh, the swampy place. So the quickest way to go here is to uh, teleport with the fairy ring and go to CKS, which is uh, Canifis, or however you pronounce it. It will take you to this place. We want to, yeah, that didn't work, but we wanted to uh, blade a dive to here, and then we want to right click and quick travel on the gate. What that does is it will take us straight to here, and we just jump the fence. I'll jump the bridge. Blade dive uh, or not, apparently. <laughs> and uh, and then just dig around the back of here. And that will get you your clue. All right, so I have been doing clues for quite a few hours now, and there is a few steps that just refuse to show up. So uh, I'm going to have to give those ones a miss. Um, there isn't too many steps that I've missed, I don't think. There's maybe just a handful. But yeah, I do have about three or four hours worth of uh, clue footage to go through now to uh, edit all down. So yeah, hopefully you guys don't mind that I've missed a couple of steps. I knew I might have the possibility of not getting them all, but that's absolutely fine. Um, I've got the majority and hopefully this has helped some of you guys out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if there is anything that you guys can see to improve, then do let me know down in the comments as that will help not only me out, but help uh, everyone else that is wanting to do clues and stuff out as well. Um, but yeah, this uh, hopefully is going to help enough of you out. Uh, hopefully I explain stuff enough. I, I have no idea. This isn't the kind of stuff that I would normally do, but uh, I've had a few people asking me and it is something that I've wanted to do for a little while. But yeah, with all that being said, if you did end up enjoying the video or did find it useful, then do give the video a like, dislike it if you dislike it, and if you are new, then please do subscribe. And as usual, I will catch you in the next one.